Hey everybody, welcome back to Venom Central. Today we're going to do the Bothrops. We're going to work with probably the most feared snake in the tropics besides the Bushmaster. Um, the Bothrop species, uh, also known as the Fergalans. <clears throat> now, we have several species of Bothrops here. I've, I, I keep a group of things and we've got some breeding projects going with them and stuff, but I want to hit on today on safe handling of Bothrops and, and, and captive care. And uh, if you like this video, if, 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 if you guys like what I'm doing, Give me the thumbs up, subscribe, hit that bell notification thing, and uh, and I'll keep making them. And, I mean, I'm trying to help the herb community and educate people that there are venomous keepers and guys that do this for a living like myself that are knowledgeable and that are safe and that we know what the fuck we're doing. And I'm seeing all these videos of, of, of these guys free handling stuff and getting bit and everything else in it. And, and that's just not what it's about. Um, it's about the animal. It's not about us. It's about the animal and, and working with these animals and what we do because it's so interesting that people want to know. I mean, it's, it's a very interesting topic and people want to know why we do this and what drives us and what's our passion for this. And so I'm just trying to spread some education. But... Uh, with no further ado, I'm going to start out today with one of the smaller species of Bothrops, the Bothrops mugenii. Now, we just did a live feeding video with the female, and she's pretty good size. She's about three and a half foot, and uh, I've been feeding her live because she's gravid, and it's just something that I do when my animals are gravid. I like to give them a few live meals before and after they give birth. I don't know, in my mind, I think that a fresh meal, fresh blood, fresh gut content is good for them. But I mainly feed a lot of my animals frozen thawed. Because when you have a collection as big as mine, it's just a lot easier. But uh, speaking of live feedings and frozen thawed, I want to give a shout out to the Wolf Pack. Y'all are amazing. Thank you for the support. Thank you to Desert Wolf Armory. You guys fucking rock, man. Right on. I'm going to keep following you and... Stay with you, Big Daddy. But, uh, so, moving on. Now, this is the male Bothrops mugenii. And <clears throat> the thing is, is, this is literally scientific name, Bothrops mugenii. Now, normally known as the Brazilian lancehead. And it's confusing. There's a lot of different lancehead Bothrops species, and they all got different names. But I'm going to show you guys the Bothrops brazilii which is a different Bothrop species, but it's not the Brazilian lancet. <laughs> it's, it's the taxonomist and the guys that make up these names and sit behind desks and do this, or they drive me crazy. But uh, anyways, now this one is not that big of a snake, okay? He's still got some growing to do, but he just reached maturity. He's four years old. And this snake, he can be hooked and moved around safely. There's no special procedure needed. I mean, he's not a big, heavy animal, and, I mean, we can hook him and move him. But mind you, look at the size of this snake hook. It's it's pretty long. And I'll use a longer hook when I'm working with Bothrops. They're notorious for coming up a hook. They're notorious for being squirrely. And several of mine, yeah, if they hit the ground and they get spooked or they get excited, they're doing this. But when they're doing this back and forth, trying to get away from you, they double back on you, and they come at you with their mouths open. And it's freaking scary. But uh, it's it's all scary. I mean, you can, you can call me a sissy if you want, because I do stuff the right way. But there's one thing that you will always call me, and it's alive. Because I'm not going to get fucking bit. I do things the best, safest possible way. I wish everybody would follow them guidelines. But anyways, we're just going to gently move this guy into his cage. I just did some cleaning in there. That's why I got him in a garbage can. And he's a little squirrely already. And I use every inch of this hook just to keep his little squirrely ass away from me. And we'll let him crawl in there on his own. Now, mind you, see how I'm using my hook to close the door? I use my hooks for everything. These things are an extension of my body. I don't want to get my hands near there or even get close to this thing until I've got it closed and I can use my hook to keep it closed and hold it in place to reach in and turn my damn locks, okay? 
And now I'll go back and lock it up. I normally have these around my neck for all the cages, but I figured out when I'm bending over to move things or something, this stuff gets in my way and it's a distraction. So I kind of just leave this aside while I'm working in here anymore. But safe, simple, smart, easy way that you can do it possible. That's the way to go. But I'm going to get into moving some bigger snakes and techniques that I use to move these big, crazy fur de lance around. So we're going to move on. Okay, for our next animal, we're going to move up in size. Now, this is probably one of my favorite Bothrop species. I love these things. They are absolutely gorgeous. Um, this is the Arutu. Now, this snake is endemic to Argentina. And this is the Bothrops alternatus. Now, I've got a small group of them. And I just did some paper changes. And I kind of spiffed up their tubs a little bit. I'm raising them in grow-off tubs right now. And they're getting to that size where they're going to be exhibit animals pretty soon. But these were produced by a good friend of mine, Manny, over at Reptile Lagoon. And these are two-year-olds. And I just got another set of one-year-olds. But these things are amazing. And the way I keep a lot of my Bothrop stuff is, believe it or not, I keep it really cool. I keep them anywhere from 73 to 78 degrees. And I'll give them a hot spot, you know, of about... 80 to 85, a small hot spot. And if they choose to go over there and warm up, they can. But 98% of the time, they're on the cool side of the rack or the cool side of the cage. They like it cool. They don't really like to use a hide box too much. <laughs> I, I haven't figured that one out, or at least mine ain't. They sit up on top of it. And I've got hides on both sides. Hides on the cool end, hides on the warm end. And you think if they were trying to get warmer, they'd perch up higher on the warm end, but they kind of perch up on the cool end. But anyways, I keep them cooler, and I don't feed them a whole lot. I think overfeeding Bothrops, it, it's not good for them. It starts messing up their kidneys, their liver and stuff. I mean, now as they're growing, I'm feeding them, you know, once every couple weeks in an appropriate size meal. But let me show you these, and I'm going to move them into their rack and show you my procedure of moving these things safely. And this kind of goes for a lot of Bothrop species. Now you can hook this snake and move it around, but it can be flighty. It can be a dangerous snake. Okay, and this is one of my males. And this one has kind of got the chocolate browns and, uh, and, and uh, the, the tanner background color. And it's just an amazing animal. I mean, look how gorgeous that thing is. And keeping them cool. Don't feed them too much. Don't mess with them too much. And they do really well. Now, humidity. I keep these guys at a pretty high humidity. Now, mind you, I don't miss them. And I don't keep them wet. It drives me crazy. I see guys misting snakes to raise humidity. I run a cool mist humidifier in my room. I keep my room humidity at about... 65 to 75 percent humidity it's just better for the animal they have nice clean sheds they don't develop respiratory they just they just do better with a nice humidity and a cooler temperature especially the bothrop stuff and it holds true for bushmasters too don't spray them that's stupid they're end up with pink belly and end up infected and sick and a lot of this bothrop stuff is very similar so just high humidity Lower temperatures with a hot spot, and they do really good. But I just cleaned his cage, and this is how I'm going to move this guy. Now, I'll use a hook to lift him. Now, mind you, now with this lid, when I took that lid off, you know, I want to show you that. I'm going to put this back on. Now, mind you, here's where my fingers are at. They're up out of the way. Now, when I take a lid off a tub, I use this lid of this tub like a shield because a lot of times a damn snake especially these bothrops and stuff they're going to strike when they pick up that heat signature off your body or anything or, or even the heat signature off a damn camera a light bulb i've seen them hit anything i'll use this lid as a shield and i'll keep it in front of me in case that snake decides to take a poke at me that lid is in between me and that snake and it's also blocking the heat signature coming off my body 
So it's safer for me, and it keeps him at ease. Okay, and then I back up and get out of the way. I know you, I, I still have my lid in my hand. I still have my lid in my hand, okay? And I'm going to use this lid. This is a tool, okay? Snake stick, lid. We're going to use these things in unison and move this snake into his tub safely. Okay? I just threw some extra stuff in his tub for some enrichment. A nice hide on each side. A little log, a little bit of green stuff. But, now these things are notorious for being flighty. Now, mind you, these, and, and here he goes. He's going to start tripping on me a little bit. Yep, he's already starting to rattle his tail. Now, that's an indicator that he don't want to be screwed with. But, and here he goes. He's going to start acting a fool. Now, I'll use this lid as a platform. Watch this. Just to keep him from falling... Instead of using that two hook method, I use the lid to balance him. It's a flat platform for him to sit on while I've got him hooked and I'm moving him. Once again, I'm using my hook to close that damn drawer up, okay? But isn't that slick? Use this as a platform. That snake doesn't feel himself getting moved off the ground and start tripping the fuck out. Hook him, platform him, move him over. You're safe out of the way. Let him crawl into his tub or back into his exhibit. It's a safe, simple, easy way to move this crazy snake around. Here, let me go over to the other one. Okay, now we're going to move on to the male. I want to show you this male. He is kind of a different color phase in the female. Now, this, this male is really black. That's where my fingers are at. They're out the way. He's really black with really nice white and cream colored markings around him. And he's actually getting ready to go in the shed. But what a fantastic animal. What a beautiful animal. I just love these things. I can't wait to reproduce them. Um, but we're going to move this one the same way we moved the other one. We're going to use our tools. We're going to use our snake tip. We're going to use our lid. My shield, notice where this thing's at the whole time. It's in front of me. Okay, and we're going to try to do this as, oh, and there he goes. See what I'm saying with bot props? And look at that. See, look how quick and slick that is. And you let him drop in there. See what I'm talking about? When it, they explode and they get crazy. And with your hook and your lid, now, you probably didn't get to see a lot of that because I platformed his ass quick and moved him quick. I didn't trip out. I didn't panic. I didn't fucking go ape shit. Most keepers would go and he'd be dropped on the floor and gone. You stay cool. When you're confident in your handling abilities, you stay cool. But you see how I use that? I'm glad he did that so you can see that. I use that as a platform. As soon as that snake feels his body coming off and off the ground, he feels that he's dangling in the air, that's when he fucking loses it. He's going to just try to get off that hook and come at you. Use that lid as a platform. Move him. That saved us right there. From the snake getting injured and me getting injured. And we're going to use our hook to close it up. And this damn tub, it's so tight it sticks. Notice I'm using a longer hook to push that tub. It's tight, so I gotta push it from the rear. But that was a good example of Bothros behavior, and that's what they do. Free handling in one, hooking one, and trying to tail one and move them around. That shit doesn't work good with Bothros. They're just so crazy and flighty. I mean, you can do it, and some guys do do it. This is the way I do it. I mean, I've caught them in the field with a hook and tail them and move them, but. I'm not saying that my way is the best way. I'm not saying that this is the correct way. This is how everybody should do it. This is just what works for me. This is the way I've been doing this for 35 fucking years. And it works for me. And maybe it'll work for you. If, 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 if you're working with these kind of animals. But we're going to move on to another animal. Okay, moving on to our next snake. Um, another Bothrop species. Now, this species of Bothrop gets a little bit bigger. Um, this is the Bothrop's Leocorus. Now, these snakes just came out 
of quarantine. And I've got him set up in a tub, and this is what he's been in for the past several months. Now, these snakes were given to me on a breeding loan by a really good friend of mine. And uh, we've had them in quarantine, but they're just now getting ready to move moved into a population. So we're going to move them out of these tubs and set them up in a bigger exhibit. But for now, we're just going to leave them where he's at. I'm going to show them to you. This is a male Bothrop Flea, of course, also known as the white-tailed pit viper or the white-tailed lance-headed viper. Um, many people refer to all of them as fur de lance, but the true fur de lance is a different species. The true fur de lance is the Bothrop Martinique, the Martinique viper. And it's, they call it fur de lance because it was a French guy that discovered it. And who knows, he just said, that's the fur de lance. But anyways, I'm going to show you the male lay of course, and then we're going to show you the female lay of course, and she's a beast. But just to show you the size difference of these guys. Now, my same techniques apply here. I'm going to use this shield, this hook of this tub as my shield, and my hands are up out of the way. Back it up, use it to cover, and look where he was. He's right there on top of that limb perched up, but he's not picking up a heat signature on me. He's not going to try to bite me, but this is the male, and what a beautiful animal that is, and he's not real big and heavy bodied, but he's big enough to do some damage, but look at the color on this. I mean, it's funny because these males really resemble another Bothrop species, and they've been confused by collectors as Teniata. There's another species called Bothrop Teniata that looks really similar to this and it's kind of a semi-arboreal species of Bothrop stuff. Actually, I really got hooked on this Bothrop stuff the several years I was the curator at Cape Fear Serpentarium. My buddy Dean Reaper got me hooked on this Bothrop stuff. But, uh, and so I've been accumulating my own collection here over the past couple of years of these things but um that's him and we're not going to take him out we ain't got a cage set up for him yet but i just want to show him to you because when you see the size of the female you're going to understand what i'm talking about as far as female to male size and we're going to let him get back under his hide there and we're going to let this guy back up flighty, aggressive Bothrops. Now, this snake is no joke. This is a big, big lay of course. It's probably one of the biggest ones I've ever seen. It's, it's a big white-tailed pit viper. It's, it's a freaking monster. She's every bit of six foot, and she's that big around. <clears throat> I don't know if it's going to translate through the camera just how big she is, but she's a big, fast, crazy snake. And I don't take any chances with this animal. Because to take a chance with this animal would just be foolish. I'm not going to lift this animal up. Because every time this animal gets lifted, it feels its body leaving the ground. It flips out. And it starts doing its typical crazy shit. And it's done it to me several times where it's backed around on me. And it came at me with its mouth wide open. And I've developed a way to do this. Now I've used shift boxes with big stuff like this before and I had one in her cage and she doesn't use it. I can't get her to go in it. I can't spook her in it. I can't drive her in it. She sits up on top of it and she fucking dares me to come in there and fuck with her. So she has to be manually extracted from her cage every time I clean it or change the substrate and then manually put back in. So I use a shift box outside of the cage, which these big tubs work great for this because the lids actually drop down and you can just kind of coax them out of it and then coax them into it. So, and this snake was a gift from a buddy of mine, Matt. And when he brought it to me 
a few months back. I'm thinking, okay, it's just a white tail pit viper. It's going to be three, four foot. And I look at it and I go, thanks, buddy. And it's six foot. It's just big around. And it's it's just a beast. And it's and it's the devil. The snake's mean. But uh, this is the way that I do this. And like I said, you can call me a, you can call me a sissy. You can say I'm afraid of them. I respect them. I know their capabilities. But there's one thing you can call me, and it's alive. And that's the way I'm going to stay. So what we do is, she's inside. We're going to gently lay this tub down. All right, and I just felt her flop over. There she goes. You can hear her flopping over. We're going to let her settle for a minute and right herself. Okay. Now I'm going to move this back a little bit and give her some space to crawl out. I'm going to have to hook her and just kind of coax her into her cage. And I just kind of pimped her cage out a little bit with some fresh substrate, a really nice little hide in there for her with some rocks and some greenery, just some enrichment for her. And then we're going to move that back. And notice I'm using my big hoof. Okay? And now we're going to drop this lid down. All right? And now she's got a direct shot to go into her cage. Are you getting that in there, babe? Can you see him? Mm -hmm. Okay. And I need to be able to get where I can put my eyes on her, okay? And we don't want her getting too squirrely. I'm trying to keep her calm while I keep myself calm. <laughs> All right. Where's your head? There you are, baby girl. Come on, you big rascal. And here she comes. And the main objective of this is just to get her to go on her own. And there's all six, probably six and a half foot of her now. So we're going to let her just crawl in there on her own. No stress. She's not wigged out. She went in very gently on her own. And I'm going to reach down and close her exhibit up. And that was as simple as can be. And it was no stress on the animal. She's not spooked. She's not flighty. She's not going crazy. And she's happy. She's back in her exhibit. All right, we're going to move on to the next animal. Okay, for our last Bothrops of the day, I'm going to show you the Bothrops Brazili. Now, you don't often see this snake too much, but this is probably one of the most beautiful Bothrops there is. This thing is gorgeous and it had just come out of quarantine like the others but this one i'm not going to hook it and move it i don't have this exhibit set up yet we just moved her into population and this thing is gorgeous but you would think that they would call the bothrops mugenai which is common name is brazilian lance-headed <laughs> but this is the bothrops brazili and tell you honestly, I don't even know what the common name of this snake is. <laughs> but its range overlaps with Aatrox and, 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 and Mugenai and, and stuff. But, uh, but it is an absolute gorgeous snake. And I just want to give you guys a peek at it. We'll actually do a video of a live feeding with her in the upcoming months. Um, but uh, let me just give you guys a nice little peek at her. And I know from my hand wrap, they're up here out of the way. Fingertips. Ain't down on the side here. I can just lift this up and use this as my shield. I'm going to leave this right in front of me here. Now, this girl is absolutely gorgeous. And now, this snake has been in captivity for a long time. And this snake actually belongs to a friend of mine. And he's dropped it off here at Venom Central on breeding loan. And we're working on pairing it up. And we're going to try to produce some little ones. But, um... What a gorgeous animal. And a lot of these Bothrops are similar looking. They, they, they've all got the chevrons and stuff and that big spooky looking head. And that's why they call him a lance head because his head looks like a lance. I think it kind of resembles an, an arrowhead, if anything. But, uh, but let me tell you, there's a large set of fangs sitting in that head. Um, but just to take a look at her and uh, 
show you all what she looks like. And now she's a big snake. She's she's probably four foot. She's got some size on her. And you can see right now she's just con contemplating. Okay, there's a light on me. I'm gonna taste the air and see what's going on. And uh, before I decide to explode and try to shoot out of this tub, <laughs> so we're gonna cover her up real gently and. End this video with a thank you all for watching and don't forget to subscribe <clears throat> give us a thumbs up like share I'm trying to grow my channel I'm trying to educate people about these animals um, and once again a big thank you to the wolf pack you guys are great I think what you guys do with desert wolf armory is amazing um, and stay tuned because we got a lot more stuff coming. And like I said, if you guys like what I'm doing, comment, subscribe, share. We're trying to grow this into an educational channel. And I know I use profanity a lot and stuff. That's just my personality. But anyways, come on back and check out Venom Central. And stay tuned. And thank you all for watching. Willie, Venom Central, checking out. Later.